Hello, I'm Brian Hubbard. And I'm Lynn McTaggart. And we are What Doctors Don't Tell You. Mental disease. I mean, the standard view still has it that it's primarily a disease of the brain. And particularly more serious conditions like bipolar, schizophrenia, they're pretty much convinced it is in the brain. So it's quite interesting that a little while ago we ran into a psychiatrist who practices in, in the States. And... Um, she was telling us that she doesn't believe a word of that, that she doesn't think that um, any mental disease begins in the brain at all, and that indeed that it all starts systemically in the body somewhere, but not the brain. So this got us interested to find out more, and recently uh, Lynn went on a call with her. I did. I did an interview with, with her, which you'll be hearing shortly, where she said there's essentially no such thing as mental illness. Mm. It starts much further upstream, somewhere in the body, and that she has been able to cure people of all sorts of things, from depression to schizophrenia, by identifying those things in the body, those biochemical things that aren't operating normally, and sorting it with diet or supplements mm. or a combination of both. So please listen to this because Pam is going to be one of the many therapists we're going to feature at our new show, the Get Well mm. Show, February 21st to 23rd at Olympia in London. Mm. So yeah, that's going to be a show. It's going to be a showcase for Many alternative practitioners who are making breakthrough discoveries that actually are working for thousands of people. Yeah, it's an opportunity for everyone to meet each other. So anyone with a chronic condition, we uh, invite to come along to the show. It's going to be at Olympia in London, February 21st to 23rd. You catch it at our website, getwell.solutions. But anyway, um, here comes the interview with Lynn. Hi, Pam. Welcome to our podcast. Hi, thank you. So you have a really interesting take on mental illness, and that is essentially there's no such thing as mental illness. Do you want to elaborate on that? Yes. Um, I noticed a very long time ago that people who came in with what we consider actual mental illness to have a lot of physical symptoms, um, and then, you know, when you logically think about it, the brain and, and the body are not separated. Your head is not floating above your body. Um, so everything is obviously connected. I started noticing patterns. I started looking into it many, many years ago. But it's very clear now, now that I'm really very integrative, that we are a house of cells, human beings. And those cells need to have a few things. They need to have basic building blocks. They need to be able to communicate with one another, just like tree roots in a forest. They need to have the ability to repair themselves. So the biological cycles need to be set correctly. And all of those things affect all cells. And so your brain is made of cells and your body's made of cells. So they are all intertwined. A lot of times when we dig deep, when we do some blood work and some urine work and we see, you know, what are, what are the basic building blocks that are off? And a lot of the time they have nothing to do with the brain and the only manifestation that's obvious, maybe the brain, a mood, um, what we call sort of a loss with reality, delusions or psychosis is what people would consider them. So there's many things going on, but if you go into the cells, your basic cells, you'll see that the things that are wrong or unbalanced is easier to measure you know the nutrients in a in a regular cell than it is to take brain cells out but we'll see consistent imbalances and we can correct those imbalances okay well let's take something like depression do you have a particular signature that you find over and over again in terms of imbalances Absolutely. There's a few things too. You know, we can't negate the fact that we are human beings that thrive and actually wouldn't survive without other human beings. So if someone has literally no support or is completely isolated from others, we can fix their basic imbalances, which are always, by the way, zinc and B6 are always there. If you have any depression, any anxiety, 95% of the time, I don't need to do a lab. I'll say, let's add some B6 and some zinc and you know, see what we're doing, which we do with people who don't have great insurance covering those things, right? 
But we also need to make sure, you know, that person has some sort of support or community and they have the ability to, you know, go into their inner selves, their true self. And what that means cellularly is the cells become coherent, like when people meditate. So there's a few things that we do and they're pretty simple. Um, but in terms of measurement, always be six and zinc are your sort of larger culprits and magnesium is another one, not just for the brain, but for any cell in the body. You know, each cell in our body has about 300 reactions that need magnesium. So, Right, a key nutrient. Um, So what you're saying is, so you've got this biological cellular need and there's usually a deficiency of B6, magnesium, and uh, zinc. And then you've got community issues where people may be isolated Um, and then you have this kind of sense of um, kind of spiritual coherence for want of another word where you know people need to use relaxation and connection with higher beings etc also to get reconnected Um, so what let's look at some of the other so-called mental illnesses what about something like uh, um, schizophrenia So these are interesting because the more, you know, I'll say pathological it looks, you know, of course, the more interesting it is to me because I truly don't believe that anyone is broken. I do think people with schizophrenia, and there's actually tons of beautiful information that you can get on this when you look up spiritism in Brazil. These are people who have abilities to see and go into other dimensions, right? So they present as crazy, as psychotic, because they're lost. They're not sure, am I here, am I there? And, you know, the way that the brain actually works is that if I tell you as a doctor, um, you know, you're going to die from this cancer we found in you in six months, your body will respond to that by creating the cancer. It doesn't even have to be there. It's the subconscious, right? So when we tell someone they're very broken, they will become that manifestation as well. So... The basic nutrients with schizophrenia are very interesting because there are, you know, this goes back to the 50s to, you know, old work that is just beautiful. And we've had it the whole time from biochemists that, oh, wow, certain subtypes of schizophrenia are actually like a manifestation of celiac disease. They can't have gluten. You know, so wow. Interesting. Fairly easy to correct. Um, you know, a lot of times it's the NMDA receptors, correct? And it's um, a perception that it's an autoimmune issue. But when explain you train what up that the immune is. system, explain what that is. So what happens is the body is set up to heal ourselves, right? So we have these things in our immunology built in that recognize things that come in as self or not self. And so when it starts to mix up self with not self, because there's no coherence in the cells, meaning they are all out of whack. You know, it's like a hundred children in a room drumming a drum all at different times, total cellular chaos. So the messages, the communication can't go through our neurological systems. You know, so what happens is, for example, when we have an NMDA issue, those are brain receptors that keep us calm and help us focus in this perceived reality, right? right? Our body will say that's foreign. Those receptors are not from this body. So you must remove them. So the immune system attacks them, you know, so cleaning up the immune system solves that problem. And that is profound because those people really present as what we would consider in psychiatry, floridly psychotic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's so interesting. So you've got this one biological cause of a cellular communication breakdown, But you also mentioned something else that I thought was very interesting. People who, uh, as I'd say, are, you know, um, see into the field, essentially, Mm -hmm. where they're seeing visions. Maybe they can remote view. Uh, Maybe they have strong precognition. All of those kinds of extra, um, extra sensory type of perceptions. Um, that they were born with. And there are so many people with gifts like this. I mean, in fact, everybody has it, but some people are more developed than others, like some people are more gifted at playing the piano. They were saying these kinds of people, because uh, this is not the reality that other people describe, are then labeled crazy. 
correct. And I always find the paradox of our Western world extremely interesting in that, you know, I'm not a Christian myself, but Christianity is a religion around Jesus Christ. If Jesus Christ lived today, he would be locked up. You know, I am the son of God and I can perform miracles. It's interesting how we're not checking ourselves when we go and label things and decide what is, you know, okay and not okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's very interesting because we're happy to accept miracles and miraculous behavior in religion, but not okay in accepting it in a cellular, uh, yeah, a secular situation. Um, and a cellular situation too, um, then suddenly this is this is mental illness. But you've gone as far as to say there's no such thing as mental illness. I do not talk believe about that. that. Yes, I mean this you know could get into a deep philosophical talk of when you when you understand quantum physics, right? The field can be either a miracle or it can just be science, right? They're the same thing. So we go in there and we label things as. That is acceptable. This is not acceptable, right? Who is mm-hmm. who made that up? And it might have served our social communities sometime in the past. In the present, as our perception that mental illness is on the rise, which of course does not surprise me, it's not serving us. We need to reconfigure how we're evaluating things. You know, we change children's brains, for example, in the United States. A lot of the time, we label a child with ADHD, we put them on medicine. Because they are not fitting, their brains are not fitting the school design. Why aren't we questioning the school design? Especially Mm -hmm. as that is on the rise. Could our children really be that broken? Mm -hmm. You know, so I just think it's about a conceptualization shift. But what the important part of that is, you know, what we believe becomes true for all of us, whether or not we believe in the field, correct? So we have to change our perceptions of things. Well, even if it's, we're just talking about biochemistry. I mean, in so many instances, you find that when you clean up their biochemistry, the mental illness goes away. Do you want to speak to that? Yeah. I mean, I have a lovely case right now of this amazing elderly woman who I truly was concerned when I first started working with her that, you know, she's alone. I'm working with her, you know, via telepsychiatry. She's not local. Um, and I'm just, you know, and I, and I check in with a family member, but we go sort of very slowly just by very slowly and minuscule using a compounding pharmacy, backing down on her psychiatric meds and then just getting high fructose corn syrup, nothing outside of her diet. She is so lucid and so with it that even, you know, my assistant is like, it is so lovely to talk to her. She was so confused before. And we've barely done anything. You've just taken a a nasty little um, bit of processed food and taken that out of her diet. And that was clearly a poison to her, making her crazy. Right. And we also know as we age, our kidneys and our liver become more sensitive, correct? So they're going to slow down the filtration of a toxin or of a drug. And I don't notice a lot of people like a primary care doctor who are managing, oh, every year this person ages, I will back down on the dose of that drug. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, that's almost, no, they do the reverse, Pam. They're adding more drugs to the pile. You know, you've got what, an average of seven to 12 drugs, I think, for uh, seniors. It's just shocking. So, and no one is asking those questions about detoxing these these drugs from the system if your liver is not as efficient as it was when you were 25. So um, tell me a bit more about um, about what you would do for something like bipolar. So bipolar disorder is one of my favorite things when I notice someone, you know, I don't really label people anymore. But if I notice someone could potentially have this because there's so many gifts affiliated with it and it's fairly easy to control. They're very nutrient responsive in general. Um, It's important that they go into the proper biorhythms, meaning, you know, when the sun goes down, your pineal gland stops producing serotonin and makes melatonin. And then when the sun rises, 
it, it does the opposite. And just because we decided to invent electricity and make all of these things, you know, change our schedules, those people's brains, it's like they electrically short if they do not have consistent routine in their biorhythms. Mm -hmm. So if they can, they're very sensitive to, you know, poisons, uh, toxins. So if they can kind of clean themselves up and honor their life enough to go, this is how I have to roll, they, they excel above any group of people, at least in the clients that I see, um, that I've known. Because people with schizophrenia can be tough as by the time I see people, you know, there's interventions that may be difficult culturally to change. but people with bipolar disorder are often very high functioning. Um, you know, and it's a great example of what we spoke about before, where we really have to change our cultural seas that we're swimming in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that yes. people be healthy and happy. Yes. Now, what do you typically find aside from, um, keeping their biorhythms going, you know, properly where they're in sync with, with, with light and darkness. Um, what other nutrients do you find are really important with bipolar? So what's interesting with nutrients is I'll go back to like, you know, there's a certain list. They may need some extra nutrients to balance out heavy metals. Um, but zinc B6 and magnesium are always up there. Vitamin D is obviously an essential one. We all know for the brain and the body, mm -hmm. uh, Iodine is something that specifically for bipolar disorder, it's not the only thing, but there's always some underlying thyroid issue when people have bipolar disorder. Oh, that's interesting. And how do you tend to treat thyroid issues? It actually depends. So I obviously do a very complete panel. The TSH doesn't even measure your thyroid. Um, it's a pituitary hormone. So uh, we do a complete panel and then we figure out, you know, are you not able to convert from inactive T3 to T4 or vice versa? Or, you know, what is, is it, is it an autoimmune system? Is your brain now saying that's not self versus self? You know, if you kind of look at the periodic table, the answers are all there though, because in the halide group, I think iodine is the fourth in that row. The three things above that are going to have more aversion in terms of like connecting to your thyroid, they're going to do that before iodine, right? So that's fluoride, bromide, chloride, right? <laughs> so actually, these are just people who are very sensitive. And mm -hmm. I've also noticed too, you know, it's sort of what I do in my life is bring together community as well, right? And in this community of like-minded people, and a lot of them are seers, some of them are so sensitive, they can't even wear jewelry. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. Uh, yeah. So what, what do you find are some of the biggest poisons environmentally and also food poisons that create so-called mental illness? Well, I think in America, we have to be pretty honest with ourselves about wheat. Yeah. We have, unless we're getting organic heirloom wheat, um, and I still wouldn't risk that with celiac disease, but we've changed the proportion of, you know, chafe to wheat, and we can't digest what we've created. Mm -hmm. So what happens is we start getting inflammation and specifically in the brain, you know, it's been referred to as grain brain, you know, and other grains to a lesser degree. Mm -hmm. But it, think about it, when you have an infection on your finger, it gets really swollen, right? And you can feel that blood and other things are having trouble circulating through there. So, you know, on a different level, but the same phenomenon that's occurring in our brain. Mm -hmm. You know, it's trying to transmit, it's trying to balance, but it's unable to. So nutritionally, that is, at least in America, very important. Um, I think that, like I said, we have killed certain things on the earth. And that's even when we eat organically and, and beautifully it's not in the soil. So, you know, if you're eating perfectly harvested organic stuff, it may still be extremely short on magnesium and zinc and the B vitamins. Some people need more B12 from animal sources than others, right? This is something else I measured. It has to do with your methylations. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Um, what okay. do you find that, not what, do, what, what you, does aversion to wheat generally cause? You know, a problem with people digesting wheat. Are they more likely to be depressed or do they do, uh, does it, do they present with a whole spectrum, you know, all across the spectrum of so-called mental illness? Well, I think it presents all across the spectrum of mental and physical illness. However, mm-hmm. there are things, if someone has celiac disease, especially in children, they're oddly obsessed with death. Not that they may want to die, but they have like, they're really obsessed with death. It's wow. Especially that Adela. is interesting. Right. Um, it is, you know, it's hard to say because it, again, it's starting in the gut. What happens is the gut will break down first and mm-hmm. then things leak into the blood. And then I don't know, you know, there's not a ton of data on this, but I'm assuming we must also be altering the blood brain barrier a little because then a lot of stuff that shouldn't be leaking into the brain will then leak into the brain. Right. You know, so it's, once you have a leaky gut situation, yeah, there's, right. uh, there's definitely, but, uh, uh, it does seem to cross the blood and brain barrier. Um, so I always address the gut with anybody because, you know, it certainly can't hurt um, getting like, like I like to use a natural symbiotic, which is a prebiotic and a probiotic, you know, and really inform people. You know, it's really just about teaching people sort of why they are related. Why is my brain related to what I eat? You know, it's, it's yeah. powerful. Tell us, you know, one of or two of your favorite success stories of patients who had, you know, who were really presenting with all kinds of problems or one specific very severe mental illness that you were able to help them resolve through this approach. Well, it's funny because, of course, you lose touch with a lot of people once they get better. Um, Although sometimes they'll contact us for, you know, their supplements or something. But um, my favorite people were women who, you know, I want to say were in their forties, uh, very different situations, but really just addressing the basic, okay, especially when they come in, I'm thinking of this one woman who comes in, you know, she has a child who's in high school, she's divorced, she is unhappy in her job. She has a history of being on a ton of antidepressants and then switching and, you know, sort of that placebo effect. Oh, I think I'm better. And no, and, you know, comes in and Mac is maxed out on sort of the latest one at the time. Right. Um, so when she came into my office at the beginning and we started to unpack really what's going on in her life and she felt safe revealing how truly she is not able to function in a way that where she can feed herself well or follow a simple regimen we did underlying blood work we did we ran some urine and we came up with kind of some simple stuff to correct she was very responsive and then like a lot of times she was very responsive specifically to b6 i mean she took it in the morning and she felt like i've not had this kind of energy in years right so then they it, we get momentum and then you know over time she ended up shifting her whole life she got out of the bad job and you know found one that was better but then did that part time and then went and started her own business you know so it's also about really being true to yourself and having the ability to be healthy you know and not compromising on every level like a lot of people especially women in our culture are forced to do mm-hmm. um if she's somebody you know she started to meditate She started to go to like a knitting circle, which may not sound like a big deal, but that's a community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you're kind of talking about, I mean, I I love Dr. Leo Gallen's four pillars of health. So he talks about, you know, the right food and supplements. And he talks about detoxing from, you know, all the poisons that are around you, whether it's food or environmental. And then he talks about the power of community and in my own work, I've seen that that's probably the biggest vitamin pill you can take. I agree. Yes, absolutely. And so what I'm hearing, which is so interesting, is the idea that as a psychiatrist, you're not helping them heal their mind. You're help, helping them heal their life. Yes, because it heals what we like to refer to as the soul. There's, there's many energy fields. If you did an MRI, you would have seven energy fields around you, but they take it out as artifacts. So wow. really just balancing their energy fields, right? That's so interesting. That is so interesting. Well, I look forward with chatting with you some more. Um, 
Where can people find out more about you if they'd like to, you know, find out more about the kind of work you do? All of the links to my work can be found at centropyglobal.com. That's S-Y-N-T-R-O-P-Y global.com. Um, and there's various links to lots of work that I do and my colleagues and my company do. Um, and they are all related to community and health. And so there's usually something there for everybody. Wonderful. Thank you so much for your time, Pam. It's been really fascinating. And I really applaud doctors like you who are taking a bigger and a wider and a more integrative approach. So thank you. And thank you, everybody, for listening. We look forward to connecting with you again. Take care now.